My name is John Patrick. Despite this British uniform, I'm an American. I belong to an American outfit, the American Field Service, a strictly volunteer outfit of a thousand men who couldn't get into the United States Army or Navy for any one of a dozen reasons, but who wanted to see action. The reason for these British uniforms is that we're attached to the British as ambulance drivers and, when needed, stretcher bearers. And the reason for that dates back to 1914, when some Americans in Paris dug up some old ambulances and pitched in up at the front. This time, before America entered the war, the AFS pitched in again. Yes, they pitched in and they kept right on pitching. And not one of them had to. Here's a group of them en route to the fight in Burma. Already, a lot of these men on board had met Nazis in Africa, Italy. Now, Japs ahead, with frontline duty guaranteed every man on one of the toughest fronts of a tough war. In India, a train trip to Bombay was the first step in the long haul to Burma for these Americans in khaki, who, if they'd wanted to, could have been at home in blue serge suits. Salesman, carpenter, banker, actor, Americans from 17 to 55, rejected, and in some cases discharged from U.S. service for everything from a bum heart to even a wooden leg. Now each of them was about to take on G.I. life British style, K.P., latrine duty, and the rest, simply because they'd been determined to get into the show. And the day the British issued them their battle dress, Gurkha hats, bush jackets, and monsoon boots. They knew it wouldn't be long before they got their wish. By the time they pulled out of headquarters for the 2,000 mile trek across the face of India to Burma and the fighting, they knew their British ambulances inside, out, and under. And it was just as well. 37 days, the road was to wind through the heat and flies and dust of the Western Ghats, on through the Punjab to Manipuri. Rocky country, wild, remote, and ancient. A bleak, dusty India the storybooks don't bother with. Finally, the AFS men pushed up the last long climb into the Naga Hills. Burma front. This was it. It was a brief moment for a welcome from the brigadier in charge, a moment to wander through the hill village to try to tell a Naga from a Sikh or a Manipuri, or to practice bargaining with the natives to get the most out of the 20 bucks a month AFS pay. But it was a brief moment. There was work to do. Past lumbering elephants, the road wound to forward jungle stations where crack Indian troops were already rushing construction on slit trenches and bunkers for the increasingly frequent Jap air raids. And hasty first aid posts were thrown together for the growing stream of British wounded coming down from the jungle hills on every side. Things were getting tight, dangerous. There was plenty to keep their minds off the daily bully beef and tea when any meal might be interrupted by a raid. Every day was punctuated by a dozen running jumps for the nearest slit trench when the Japs came over. There was plenty of work to do, too, as through the weeks the shot-up Tommies grew in numbers. Fighting guys who kept their lip buttoned and tight and didn't know how to complain. Yeah, for the American volunteers, there was plenty of everything. But suddenly, Destroy all equipment which can't be evacuated. That was the British order. The British were withdrawing. The Japs were reinforced and breaking through. The AFS sliced their tents to strips of useless canvas. Every truck and car and ambulance that couldn't be moved was fired. Nothing which could be moved was left to the advancing Japs. The evacuation began. The only open road was narrow and jammed with troops. 
Japs were in the hills on either side with mortars and artillery. The road caught hell. So did everybody on it. So did the AFS as they did their job of clearing whatever wounded they could down to the one airstrip still out of enemy range. They got the wounded down, and Indians helped load them into American C-53s, waiting to take off to safe hospitals below. But a score of men of the AFS, the guys with the bum hearts and army discharges and wooden legs, a score of them never lived to see this escape of the Tommies they'd given their lives to save, or the hundreds more their tiny outfit has since cleared off to safety. Yes, the AFS also serves.